munchkins and viewers alike, it's me Munchie and welcome back to another cage review. Whether it be bad, good, what's the use for it? You will find out in today's video. Now, what cage are we reviewing for the hamsters today? Mind you, usually hamsters, gerbils, and mice get clubbed together, so if you are out there searching for a cage for your companion, most likely if you have a mouse or a gerbil, we might be mentioning a few tidbits here and there, but this is mainly for hamster owners out there because the market is filled with these types of enclosures which you guys will probably think of one specific brand in general but I'm gonna be describing why I purchased it today why I possibly might be keeping it and describe to you the history I have with it it is none other than the KT portable petite habitat Bring we will be reviewing this today. Yes, you you see this correctly. This is the size of it. This 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 is how it came to me. You spin me right round, baby, right round like a record, baby, right, 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 round. So welcome if you're new here. I like to review these types of enclosures to give you guys my personal opinion to teach you educational information that you may be missing in your hamster care and to also tell you about if it's worth it or not. Now, I bought this because there is some nostalgia about this. This right here, I used to house back in the day when I had rubber the Robo Hamster. Now a story with that is back in 2011 I went into Petco looking for a hamster and it turns out they had hamsters available for adoption on a table. The people came back and surrendered their hamster to Petco. So Petco's adoption program has actually been around for a very long time. People can surrender their small animals or reptiles or fish to their adoption program, not birds that I've been told, just because of I think they were worried about bird flu or some sort of bird disease. And so so when I went in, I got my hamster and at that time they didn't have cages and they didn't have the KT Critter Trail. So I went home with, it was some sort of travel carrier like style that was bigger than a travel carrier, but it was basically a travel carrier. And then I went back in and they had this in stock and I do not know what I was thinking when I bought this. I have no stinking clue how I actually got this cage when I was growing up with my second hamster, Robo which was actually named Tully the Robo Hamster, but we actually thought Robo Hamster was the full title. So I kept Robo for Robo the Hamster. <laughs> And for those of you who are unfamiliar with my little Robo, she did get an upgrade. She was upgraded to 360 square inches. That's what it was back in the day. It wasn't until several years later that we upgraded to 450 square inches of floor space, which is the United States recommended. So let's just bump that out of the list right here. The list is as follows for hamster minimum square inch of floor space. 450 is currently the US, which me, I advocate for at least 600 square inches for Syrians in the United States. Then there is a 620 square inch in the United Kingdom as minimum. And then in places like Germany, it is 860 square inches and more. The reason why I say this is because it is very important to get the right setup for your companion animal. This right here, is going to be well under 450 square inch minimum. It's probably gonna be in the 100 square inch minimum and it does matter because hamsters are foraging animals and in the wild they travel miles and miles a night. And in the domesticated life of a hamster, if they are able to even run on their wheel, they can run an average of about five miles a night on their wheel. Isn't that insane? That's why it's so very important for you guys to know about the species of animal of which you are caring for. So today I am opening this up and let's start from this end here. Now this actually used to be a different name. How about that? And I think KT never used to be named KT. It used to be called Super Pet. Isn't that interesting? Super Pet Critter Trail Mini 2. And I actually, back in the day, made a review on this as a travel carrier. Now, a lot of people back then just did not listen to my very final verdict at the very end. Can't you believe it? We've come so far since 2013, because that's when I dropped that review. But yeah, in 2013, I made a review saying that it's a crappy cage, but it's a good cage for traveling with due to the size, but nobody listened. Oh my gosh. So here I am being the apparent hamster expert by some people, hamster queen, which I do not want to be called a queen. But thank you, you're very flattering people out there that have said that. I don't want to view myself as a queen, if that's okay. But if you want to fantasize that, it's totally up to you. Here we are. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's -a me, a server new cage on the platter. So, this is what it looks like. It looks smaller than I remember. Why does it look smaller? My, these are my hands. What is this? What is this? So, the reason why I even purchased this is not just because I want to do a review on it, but because I'm going to be using this as only a travel carrier. So, let me just show you why. I have stated in the past that I have used the Living World carriers and I really like them and I was advocating them, but unfortunately, they have had the most amount of flaws I have ever seen for a travel carrier. So, I actually think I am going to be switching to smaller KT Critter Trails like the Petite Habitat here. But it has a handle, which is nice. It looks like it has locks on the side, which actually is keeping this in. Doesn't this kind of now look like a lunchbox? <laughs> But look how convenient that is. The conveniency of this is great. However, it's really not geared towards hamsters long periods of time. Now the hooks right here, I do want to say is different plastic from that of what you're hearing here. This is rubbery plastic versus hard, clear, thin plastic. So I've unattached that. Let's make sure I don't break this because the disadvantage of these types of enclosures is that this can crack very easily. If you put too much stress on it, it can crack and it also scratches very easily. So this is gonna start to look very ratty in a bit here, especially if I'm gonna be throwing it around a car. Well, not technically throwing it around a car, but it's just gonna be in the back of a car jiggling around and it does come unfortunately with the tiniest effin wheel imaginable. If you guys are familiar with Syrian hamsters and pet stores, which Pekka likes to trick you and call them teddy bear hamsters or panda bear hamsters, but if you have any sort of hamster like that, your hamster's bigger than this wheel. Katie, what are you doing? Katie, you say on the box here that it is convenient for dwarf ham- Oh! <gasps> they listed dwarf hamsters! Wow, this is the first time you guys know that when I review these cages, it literally says hamster. It doesn't specify the species of hamster of which this cage is meant for. Dwarf hamster! Look at that! Okay, so dwarf hamster, gerbils! Now we are going to be talking about the other species. So gerbils right here, they have powerful incisors. And what they do is they chew through plastic. They have a very powerful bite. They can chew through PVC pipe. Don't put PVC pipe in. I learned the hard way. I thought they couldn't, but they could. And gerbils will not thrive in plastic environments. So don't do it. Now mice, however, mice can thrive a little bit differently than dwarf hamsters can or hamsters in general. They are climbing animals. Some of the cages that KT makes can be suitable for them. It depends on the size, because I can tell you right now, you probably should not be even sticking one single mouse inside of this as a permanent enclosure. But let's just read the box, because I actually kind of skipped the box here with my talking. It says right here, build in carrying handle connectable to other habitats for an expandable room, which people have stated that you're supposed to expand. You're doing it wrong, Munchie. You're supposed to expand them. I have a plethora of different KT Critter Trail cages and Tiny Tail cages that they can all connect. But I can tell you, just that alone is not suitable enough. Expandable ports for accessories. Now, accessories that people spend $14 a set on is really bull, in my opinion, because it's really overpriced, they break easy, and the tubes that you get for a set for the accessories just goes to nowhere. It's not needed. Hamsters, when inside their own environments, make their own tunnels and burrows. It is okay to have tunnel attachments, but when it comes to just a tiny cage like this and you put like one tube going up and then going back down, it's, it's really not needed for them. You should have a big, big space here, like this table here, the size of this table, good space. This right here was only, I think this table was $31.99 or $29.99 at Target. It's a good table. You can find this table. It's a low rise table. It sits like right beside my bed here. It's a good table to stack at least a 50 gallon Sterilite DIY bin cage or a preview 528 cage on it. People have stated they just have no place to put these cages, the big cages, but you really do. You really can. If you can find a good table, even at the Goodwill, it's worth it. Anyways, up access door. So there's more, actually, is there only that opening? I thought that there was gonna be more. <gasps> what? We're going in from the top? I totally forgot. Because KT has front door cages, this one is actually from the top. How about that? Wow, I, I forgot what this even is. And it's a top water ball too. How funky is that? We don't really use these anymore. But as you can see right here on the box, that is what it comes with. 
Enough of my excessive talking, let's build this. Oh my God, look how small the dish is. So the dish actually sticks into the side here, which is very creative, but we don't need this. I can tell you right now because I used to have this <laughs> enclosure. I don't need it, but look at the pan. These are burrow animals and I can tell you right there, that is probably about an inch of bedding. People don't understand, you really need to be sticking at least three inches as a minimum. Five inches or more is recommended for them to be comfortable, for them to meet their needs. That right here is really pathetic. So let's unfold the metal bars. Now these metal bars compared to the other cages are so tiny, look how tiny they are. So I believe what we do first is we put on the sides here. So just line them up. You just let the sides click in like that. Ooh, that doesn't look like it wants to stay very well. Line this side up here. So it's giving me this weird look right here, but I think it's because it wants to be tight. So you gotta have these in here. So you slide them on like so. The top will make it better, I can tell you that. But if you take a look right here, I don't know if you can see, maybe you can see now with the background, this bar is a lot bigger than this one. That is a design flaw and problem. That can definitely be a problem in the future. As you can see, it goes from high and it goes to low. That is not cool. That is definitely very dangerous. You don't want any sort of flaw like that because it makes assembling this a lot more difficult. And that's another thing about the critter trails, assembling them and then disassembling them when you go to clean them. Yes, they can be easy if you're just doing the pan, but sometimes people don't understand that your critter might urinate on the bars as they are climbing it. So I'm just going to put this one on and put that one on. All right, it is in, but it's not liking me. So let's see if putting the top on will make it better. All right, now that I got that on, just clip it. Put the water bottle in here. Put the food dish in here, because now I have to figure out where the food dish corner is. It is over here. All right, there it is. We are not going to be putting the wheel in here, but let me just unravel it to show you what it looks like. You have to put this inside of there and listen to that beautiful noise. These are not silent at all. So when you get sets, they come with their own water bottle or their own wheel, almost 100% of the time, you will have to replace the wheel and the water bottle. Most definitely the wheel, 100% of the time, every kit that has ever come with a hamster wheel, I can tell you right now, is complete garbage. So if you're wondering about dwarf hamster wheel sizes, because this is what the box says it is for, the minimum for Roboroski hamster is 6.5. I have had some very small Roboroskis that can fit in 6.5 wheels. I have had in the past some very big Robo hamsters. There is lube on my hand. Oh, oh my gosh, why? <laughs> This is the same problem I had last time, so I didn't realize there's actually extra lube that's inside of here. But anyway, 6.5 is supposed to be for Roboroskis. However, Jungarian winter white hamsters definitely need an eight inch wheel, same as the Russian dwarf. Now the difference between those two species is one grows a little bit bigger and the type of climate that they are currently in. Winter whites have very round bodies and their necks are closer to their bodies to preserve the warmth. They are winter hamsters. As for Russian dwarfs, they have a little bit of a leaner body. They can get round and big, but they don't have the same structure as the winter whites. So there is these two stoppers here, and I'm very happy for KT. This is a very bold statement, by the way, because they used to trash on KT all the time, but they are pretty good when it comes to travel carriers and for stability compared to the other versions that try to copy them. They have really honed in on their own design, but that still has flaws in it. But they do have separately these that you can purchase and they have tunnels that you can purchase and like anything besides the actual structure of the enclosure, any sort of attachments and things like that, you can get stoppers and that's good because other companies will not have that. So it might make it very hard, but I just attached it like that. You didn't see. So let me just go over here and attach it, line it up and then rotate it. However, I remember when I had my Roboroski inside of this, these he was able to push out of because they broke every time. They are cheap, they are very cheap plastic, but he pushed it out and he ended up being in my closet. Now, I don't like this door up here because it's the same material as this. So every time you 
Wait. Wait. Are you are you kidding me? Can you not latch? I didn't see this. It's not able to latch. What? Oh my gosh, no! I was gonna use this for myself! Why isn't it latching? Oh my gosh, it's a design flaw. <laughs> oh no. So, as you can see here, I I can't latch it. Latch is broken. I was actually going to keep this because I really wanted a small travel carrier that I can actually have water access to. Now, this right here, hamsters can still come in from the side and lick that way. So it's completely fine. They don't have to be right under it. I remember my robo was doing that when I had this in here, but these water bottles, I don't remember if they were leaking a lot or after some use they would leak, but I don't know how well these water bottles work, but you can because there's wire right here, attach an outside water bottle source with a guard or with one of those suspenders that keeps it in place with the hooks on the side. There is a small dish in here, which is great if you don't want the hamster making a mess. If this is a travel carrier and you're going to the vets with it, you don't even have to put food in it. But if you are going long distance, it is good to have a little food bowl right there. You can put practically one hive inside of here. That's about it. But this, this is a problem. Especially if what happens if like I accidentally have a tip over because it has happened even with seatbelt attached to this it can tip over sometimes with sharp turns or an unexpected turn. I could, however, tape it, but that's not what I want. I want a product where I can just use it right away, not have to worry about this. And, and here's the problem too. This is a very shallow hook and it's trying to, I guess maybe I can bend it a little bit, but if I bend it too much, I might accidentally break it. It's supposed to hook underneath this yellow part right here but it's not even as I'm looking at it it's it's too far away from the part to even be able to hook I mean this absolutely sucks and now I have to return it and I don't want to return it but I'm just gonna have to return it because it's not working now during the pandemic the price for this was $21.49 that I paid for and that might seem like a lot but it's actually very minimum compared to some of the other KT Critter Trails so this is a flaw this is a design flaw and it's unfortunate because maybe the next one you get might have the same design flaw and KT needs to look into this. They're supposed to be for their products having regular check-ins to make sure that their products are functioning. Well, let's hope this is just a fluke and it's not in the next one that I end up reviewing. You might see it here on the channel if I try to go and get it again and I might talk about that in a future video, but for now, I mean, it's not safe. So some people are very confused about how they measure this. You wanna measure by the pan, not by the top. A lot of the times when people are looking online, they might see the dimensions of the top size but not the bottom. The bottom is very important because that's the floor space that they are walking on. Yes, they might have like a bigger bubble up here vertically, but horizontally they do need that space. So it's okay to be measuring from the middle of the pan because sometimes the pan, like you see here, it is gonna be longer up here, but then it goes down and it gets smaller as you go. So try to measure the middle of it or the bottom. And the rounded corners are unfortunate, but try your best to physically see where one side begins and one side ends. It's gonna be 11 and a half inches by, oh goodness, this is even smaller than I thought, just looking at the side of it, seven inches. So 11 times seven is 77. Oh, well, there's also a half. Should we count the half? So let's just do 11 by seven, which is roughly around 77 square inches of floor space. This is actually the second smallest enclosure I have ever measured, but this is from an established company. And they are saying that this is great for attaching with, but they're also calling it a habitat rather than a habitat add-on, which I really feel like they should add to their box somewhere to let people know this is not a main cage. They need to make a warning, Katie, on your products if you're watching me, because hello, I see you're following. You need to make on your boxes a warning saying that you need to attach more if you're gonna be using this. Now, unfortunately, there are gonna be people out here that do want to use the Critter Trails that will not listen to common sense. 
They will not listen to the community or what scientists are saying out there about the care that has been shown to us by pet companies out there that cater to all animals, mind you, and think that this is okay. We've had this care since hamsters were first established here in the United States. And that's been a very long time. I mean, they definitely came from metal enclosures that were very small, but this is just about the same size as what they came in when we first domesticated them. So it's, it's, it's awful to think that I have found hamsters in just a single critter trail when people say it's meant to be connected. It can be connected. Well, why don't you connect them? Money. This is $21. If you're going to be trying to connect more of them, you're going to have to buy the tubes and then the cage. Because, you know, if you buy two cages, how are you going to connect them? You need extra tubes. So it's just a money-making machine. I absolutely hate that KT is doing this. Instead of just having a big cage one and done deal, they have to do the connectable route because they want your money. And because you're going to be replacing these cages often, there goes your money or there goes your interest in your small companion. Besides this being 77 square inches of floor space, your hamster's gonna be bored, destruct. If you just give them this, give them one hide. Okay, can you fit a 10 inch? I don't think you can fit a 10 inch wheel in here. Let's see the height of this. Some people have stated that this could be meant for dwarf hamsters. I, I kid you not, there is gonna be somebody that puts a Syrian hamster inside of this it is there for the duration of its whole existence, which is unfortunate. But let's see here. It is currently nine and a half inches tall. You can't put a 10 inch wheel in here. You definitely cannot. And the wheel is probably the size of this cage. So I have brought an eight inch wheel just because this is the starting wheel for a winter white Jungarian hamster or a Russian dwarf hamster. That is the size of the wheel that they should be in. Their back should be completely straight. As you notice, it is as big big as the cage itself and because the stand is tall it's sitting on the stand the level of it is actually raised up so I can't physically stick this inside of here which is unfortunate however what I can do because you can take this off is you can stick this in here with the wires however if you try doing that you still want to be able to get it to go in because you have the bedding inside of there physically like I'm showing you here can't really have this function in there however let's try the Roboroski wheel now which is this wheel, which is a 6.5 inch wheel. And I have so many of these and I see people buying these all the time for their Syrian hamsters because that's the only wheel besides a metal mesh wheel that is available to their small animal companions. I don't understand pet companies when it comes to these wheel sizes. They're absolute garbage. There is an even smaller wheel than this. It's like a 4.3 inch wheel or something like that. It's awful, don't do it. But this you can definitely stick inside of here. So if you're traveling with your Roboroski hamster and you want the wheel inside of there, Guess what? This one works for the minimum wheel size for the Robos. Overall, it's a great travel carrier if it isn't defective when I first get it, but it's okay. Will it last? I can tell you right now, it's probably gonna last me a year or more, but I assume a year just because of what the top is made of. When I was talking to you guys, I was gonna say about like the lid here when I discovered that flaw, but I can predict that the latch right here, once you keep latching it, unlatching it, latching it, unlatching it, this plastic part is probably going to pop off, break, you name it. And you are probably just gonna get a year, maybe two years use out of this until something happens. You might accidentally drop it and then kaput, you can't use it anymore, oh no. But I will be returning this. By the way, I forgot to say, mice definitely should not be in something that's less than 200 square inches for one single mouse. So this is definitely a no-go when it comes to just housing a mouse. So thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you liked it, hit like to show support, comment down below with anything you like to say, and subscribe if you're new here and would like to be a part of the Munchkin family. Thank you guys so much. I hope this video has at least educated you a little bit more and shown you visuals about this type of enclosure. And I'll see you around in the next video. Bye-bye.